emails. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Uh, my name is Tara, and I am here with Thriving Females. And for those of you just joining us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter, I've also got Sarah here with Thriving Females. Um, but this is Lindsay. We are so excited to have you. Before we get started, I just want to remind everybody, please put your comments up on Instagram. Put your comments out on Facebook, YouTube, or Twitter, because we would absolutely love to get those comments and questions to help with this interview interview in this fun discussion. But Lindsay, why don't you start us off and tell us about you? Just some okay, personal so good stuff. stuff. Um, I am actually born and raised from St. Augustine, Florida, which is very rare these days to find. <laughs> um, so I grew up here in St. Augustine, and then I moved away to Nashville for about 10 years, and then going well over three years now, we moved back to Florida. Um, was, I had a young daughter. My husband travels a lot for work, so it, I needed to be by family, so that brought us back to St. Augustine. Um, so I have a four-year-old daughter so that keeps me pretty busy with life um i work full time so i work from home luckily but remotely um with my job back in nashville with bridgestone tire um so between work mom uh, momming duties and my husband he's usually gone for anywhere from like four to six weeks at a time so it's usually solo parenting um so, so that a lot of that just keeps me busy um but Lindsay, sidebar here, tell them what your husband does. It's kind of a cool job. I know it's hard on you, but I think it's kind of cool. It is cool. I mean, it's it's cool in what he does. It's definitely not as glamorous as it seems yeah. like on the home front, because I'm just like, well, I mean, yeah, I, I give him a hard time, because I'm like, oh, yeah, it must be hard sleeping in those hotel rooms all the time, you know? <laughs> all that silence. I don't know how you handle life on the road, but he is a tour bus driver for entertainers um, <laughs> and large tours, so um i think like last year in the last six months of the year he was home three weeks out of that so that's hard but he does get to do he's music we met in nashville he was a musician so he's very connected to music and, and so driving unfortunately was the sad reality the driver makes about three times what the band members make so he quit playing music to drive um and so but it still keeps him connected with music so he um is currently out right now that's oh, him. We lost her. We lost her. Currently out right now. Um, he they're just oh, keeping off. Oh, there we go. Sorry. Sorry. He's uh, currently out right now. They're just kicking off the summer tour for uh, James Taylor. So he's one of the Taylor drivers on the James Taylor tour. That's awesome. So I'm so excited, Lindsay. You are our second um, live interview, and I knew I wanted to have you on the show because um, the 75 day hard. Um, challenge has kind of become very popular. You see it, you know, on Pinterest, you see on Facebook, YouTube, people are always talking about it. And I really thought that Lindsay did a great dissertation of her experience with the 75 Day Hard because people are always talking about it and they're always like, well, you don't have to do that. Well, you don't have to do this. But some things that people don't understand about the 75 Day Hard, it's not just about a physical, but it's also a mental thing. But we're gonna get into all that. But there's five things, Lindsay, I just want you to tell everybody real quick, the five things you have to do in this challenge, and then we're gonna you know, really pick it apart how you got through it. Yeah, so um, you have you have your daily count, like daily, they call them daily tasks that you have to do. And if you don't achieve those tasks, then you have to start back from day one. So you do have to do them. Um, you, you don't, don't get past go or something honor system. So there's no one there saying, did you do it or not? But, you know, for integrity wise, like if you don't like and there, and there, there's some are easy, some are hard. So the number one, the one they say is screws everybody up is like the easiest task. You have to take a daily progress photo. If you don't take that daily progress photo, you start back at day one. Luckily, I'm a selfie queen, so that wasn't part of it for me. <laughs> um, you have to drink a gallon of water a day. You have to do two 45-minute workouts, um, but one of those workouts has to be outside and out in your garage with your garage door open, out on the patio, under any Fresh kind air. of coverage does not count. So you like have to be out in the elements. Um, you have to follow a nutrition plan. Now they don't break it down as to what nutrition plan you have to do. 
Um, so that's kind of up to you to decide. Um, and then there's no, or there's no cheat meals and no, um, alcohol. So, you know, I kind of related the no cheat meals in with the nutrition plan. Um, and then the no, oh, and then you have to read 10 pages a day of a non-fictional book. And I think that's all the way. There's actually multiple phases in every phase. They add things onto those tasks as well. (laughs) I'm overwhelmed by the first five. I think I would stay on task for those. I think it's a good feat. So we're going to dive into these. So the nutrition thing, I like that one of the things that um, they said follow a plan and it doesn't have to be, it can be anything. It can be, you know, you can count macros, you can count calories, you can just switch to clean eating, you can do um, what you keto, correct? You can do anything. It just has to be a good nutritional plan. And Lindsay, you were good on meal prep. Do you think that helped you? Because people don't think meal prep helps. I do. Um, I love meal prep. I, I hate doing it and I hate going to the grocery store. But because I am running solo parenting so much on my own, I actually, it helps me out tremendously throughout the week. Um, because evenings are already so rushed by the time I get my daughter from school, get home. Um, she doesn't eat what I eat anyway. So there's no point in cooking for her. If I have it prepared, I can throw it in the microwave. I can eat it. And I'm really a creature of habit. Like I can cook one thing, like I'll usually make like a breakfast, a lunch and a dinner and I eat it all week long. Um, See, I I do that too. I'll eat the same thing. And I feel like I do better if I just do the same thing every day. It, it it gets boring by like Friday or Saturday. I'm like, I'm really sick of eating this. <laughs> um, but it, it just makes life easier for me. Um, you know, so I'll cook everything usually on Sundays, um, you know, pretty much measure it out, divide it up, just have it stocked in the fridge so I can kind of grab and go. Um, but yeah, so when you did your and I don't have dishes all week long. It just, it makes yeah. the whole week easier for well, I know Lindsay for a fact because she posted a picture is she does. They're from Amazon and we can put the link on here. I think they're the best. Um, I think that's, did you get them there too, Lindsay? The black, black. I think uh, mine are from Dollar General, honest. Yeah. Or, you know, thankfully, think, like back in, in, back in the day, there's a lot of Chinese takeout containers. That exactly. <laughs> Chinese takeout. And I used those before. Yes. <laughs> and I think you can get like a hundred for eight bucks. They're the best things, but they, they're easy to proportionate. Lindsay, were you, what was your nutrition? Was it just clean eating? Did you do a calorie counting? What was, what were you doing this time? So for me, um, I kind of actually have like, you know, a reverse problem. So I actually don't eat enough throughout the day. So then my body stays in starvation mode and it makes it hard to lose weight. So the rule I set for myself as far as a nutrition plan was to, um, it kind of evolved over the 75 days, but at first it was, it doesn't matter how many calories I hit, I have to log my food Um, Because I wanted to get a baseline and an understanding of how much or how little I actually was eating. And the the first couple weeks, like my fitness pal just screamed at me every day of like, you haven't hit a thousand calories. You haven't hit a thousand calories. So then it evolved to, okay, I need to, like, I wanted to stay between 12 to 1500 calories, which everybody's like, that's so little. And I'm like, but that's so hard for me to get into. Mm -hmm. Um, so it was just at first it was track making sure I was tracking what I was eating and then it evolved into like pushing myself to eat more. Um, I didn't really, I mean, I don't know. I didn't really say like there was no like elimination of nothing I can eat um, because I don't, you can put a cake in front of me and I have no desire to touch it, but you give me nachos and pizza and I am your girl. Like I will chow down. Um, so I still eat that but it was on the side of we had pizza every like friday nights is our pizza night but instead of ordering pizza i would make my own pizza so and you did a portion control too like you're not eating a whole pizza you're eating a portion of it right and then i know everything that's gone into it you know i'm making it with turkey sausage turkey pepperoni so it is leaner and in my opinion i'm like i can get more pizza I can eat more for for less calories. And a lot, you brought up a good point, which a lot of people don't realize is they skip so many meals. And when they're like, oh, I can only eat during, um, you know, later lunch and dinner or only breakfast and then dinner. But when you actually 
skip your meal. I always told people this with the gym. I'm like, when you skip meals, it slows down your metabolism. So, and then they go, that's so much food. But then when they would start to eat more food, not a lot of food, just proportioned amount of foods, they see their stomachs are growling. It's on cue. I'm like, your metabolism is kicking in. And people yes. don't realize that it's actually better for you and healthy. Yes. yes. And um, so I've actually started leaning into, so I've transitioned like of like hit, hitting my calories because like I need the next, I, I like challenges. So now I'm kind of like, well, 75 hearts done. Now what? Um, so I, I've leaned into, okay, like I've gotten used to eating more frequently. Um, so it was like hitting 12 to 1500 calories, which is really hard in the beginning to do. And I just calculated out my macros. So I'm going to dive into the world of macros. And when I calculated it all out now, cause I, I want to start, um, body recompositioning. Um, so I have to definitely eat more to bring on that muscle. Um, it put me at like 18 to 1900 calories. It a day. does. It you, how do yeah, I eat this much? And I know Tara, can we, we all talked about this, about macros and then getting our calories. But one of the things we all struggle with is getting enough protein. Believe it or not, I think females struggle the most with trying mm -hmm. to find enough protein. I mean, we are not the man that's, you know, throwing a big slab of steak on there. I mean, did you struggle <laughs> with that, getting enough protein? Um, I think now, because like when throughout 75 hard, everything I ate, like I put the focus on protein. So I'm pretty conditioned into that now. Um, yeah. it's definitely upping my protein, but, um, because I like easy and grab to go like quest bars are my best friend. <laughs> I grab protein bars or I'll do a protein shake. Um, and everything I do eat is more on the leaner side. So I do eat, like, if I do tacos, they're ground turkey. Um, if I, you know, I do a lot of chicken and things like that. Um, so protein is actually easy for me to hit. Um, fats are easy for me to hit where I'm struggling is actually carbs. And this is just because it's like a mental shift of like, stay away from carbs. But now I'm like, what carbs is 50% of my, my daily macros. Like the carbs are bad. You know, they're not bad, oh, well, the it's not carbs. bad but I've just, re re I've never cut carbs out, but I've kind of restricted them in some sense of like, you know, I would eat, you know, the uh, bread thins or pretzel chips just because I was like, that's fewer carbs. So now I'm like, I'm lacking in that area, but you know, which is like so, crazy because my carbs should be an easy one to hit. <laughs> so part of the nutrition, it says no females, obviously, but then no alcohol fell into that. And I know whenever this is discussed, the 75 day, people are like, it's not the one with no alcohol. That's just rough. Like it's like it puts everybody's brakes on. They don't want any part of it. How did you feel doing that? Because I know there's a struggle for some people. They don't want to give up alcohol. Um, it was hard in the beginning. Um, it was really hard because, but it was very eye opening into the, you know, cause I, you know, from Thanksgiving to Christmas, like I, I kind of knew I was going to go into this. So I was like, I'm just going like frat boy style on my body. <laughs> and I drank a lot, but it told, you know, what it did show me in the beginning was very hard. And some days it would be like, oh, but I just like, it's been a rough day. And like where I've had, I've had that rough day, it would really be nice to have that glass of wine that usually turns into a bottle. Um, so like in the beginning, I would drink a lot of sparkling waters and even just drink them in a wine glass just to make me feel like I was getting something. Uh, <laughs> that's, once, a good, that's a good tip. <laughs> once I got past like the first probably two weeks of it and quickly in the first week, how much inflammation I lost, it was so motivating then that I was like, okay, I don't really miss it. I will say the hardest part of where I did miss it is in social settings. Social settings yeah. and being the social Sober one is very hard. Peer pressure is hard. <laughs> <laughs> or it's it's like when Lindsay was probably like eye opening, loose, you know, like and just enjoy it whenever you're like everybody's having a cocktail. Uh, or when but, you're the sober but, one, you're looking around going, mm. <laughs> "Is that what everybody looks like when they drink?" Yeah. Oh, so well. I, I really like I to bring it back in. I've had some drinks, um, but I've definitely like it's it's not to the level that I was at before. Um, usually it is only in social settings. 
um, that I do it. Um, but like the first day after 75 hard, I went out on the boat with my sister and I had like one and I was just like inside. I'm like, this isn't allowed. I shouldn't be doing, it. you know, like the, the transitioning of the mind shift of it was so hard. <laughs> So like, I'm sure you've had like, since you've done it, and I know you were staying right on track, but that's, I always tell people when you eat good for so long, and then you have a couple of cheat meals or unhealthy meals or a smoke call, you can really feel it in your body. Oh, yes. Yeah. So a few weeks ago, I did a girl's trip to Nashville. And yeah, it took a few days to recover from that one just because of the, like, the bar food and the drinking, you know, but I went on that trip with the mindset of I like, this was my celebration and time to do it. I mean, I don't know why I thought I could go jump back into that with the same level of tolerance, <laughs> but I gave it the old, the old college try for sure. <laughs> and then your stomach was like, Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. Well, I would actually, if it's all right with you, love to show one of your quick videos that you put together of you working out as kind of like our segue to you talking about what working out all of that time in one day over 75 days would be like. Tara's <laughs> taken this one because she's traumatized by it. It's a thing of beauty. the gym atmosphere of it but i'm a morning workout person and if i if i don't do it in the morning and i try to do it in the evening i've talked myself out of it um i can't push myself as hard so i have to do it first thing in the morning um so we have a three-car garage and the one car bay is pretty much my gym like i have the rubber mats in it i have a tv um i, I just bought a five through fifty pound dumbbell set um so, so luckily I have that to work out in and it's, it's nice in the morning that I can go out there when, as my daughter wakes up, she knows where I am. She just can come out. Sometimes she works out with me. Sometimes, you know, she's like, I just want to watch Peppa the pig. And I'm like, you go for it. Leave me alone. This is my space. Um, always have my songs and my, my jams blaring and it really kind of kicks off my day um, and the energy and that just that me time. Um, so I love it, but I do have a TV and pretty much most of it I stream is um, beach body workouts. When I did 75 hard, I knew one your one workout has to be 45 minutes long. And there's a beach body program, 80 day obsession, um, which gets you bikini, like it's out, Autumn Calabrese is one of the trainers for, or for beach body. It's her program and it's her program that she would do when she did her bikini competitions. Um, it's the program I did when I got my, after I had my daughter and I got like my postpartum body back. <laughs> um, and so I knew it was 80 days long and every workout is 45 minutes to an hour long. So I knew it would get me through the 75 hard. Um, and I just, I'm lazy. I don't, I don't want to think about a workout. Just tell me, I just need someone to tell me what to do. I, I could, and I, I know there's tons of apps that you can do to follow programs and stuff like that. But I love that they do you. I can like kind of have them going and I don't have to necessarily watch what they're doing, but as you're doing things, you know, like they are constantly giving you your body cues, you know, to, to watch your form and things like that. So you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Girl, them folders, you know, um, so it works out best for me right now in this season of life. You know, I do hope to get into back into a gym one day. <laughs> um, That's the nice thing that when people say that, oh, I don't have time to go to a gym, but there is so many. I know there's the Beach Body. I know um, they have several companies now have all different. You can buy them like for a year, but then there's YouTube even has a ton of free workouts. I mean, you can get from yoga to spin bikes to, you know, a full body workout. You just have to look for it. What do you think is like the hardest thing when you don't like, sometimes you're like, oh, I get to go to my garage. Yay. I mean, like the motivation, like how do you keep your garage? I mean, I would do that. I'd be like, Ugh, you oh, know. Um, 
I would say like, you know, the whole like motivation, motivation's crap um, because it never shows up when you need it. You know, like when you most need your motivation, it's not there. Um, so it's just, it's really a discipline. And, you know, I, I've heard quotes before, you know, of like, if you promised your friend, you're going to show up at the gym and meet them tomorrow, are you going to show up? Yes. But if you promise yourself, you're not going to show, you know, you're going to show up and you don't show up, you know, what does that say, you know, about the way you see yourself and you, you know, so I try to look at it that way. Um, I have across my mirror, I'm a huge like words of affirmation person. So like I do take like the first moment, you know, I come out turn the radio on. I usually dance around a little bit while my pre-workout kicks in. (laughs) Pre-workout is a godsend in the mornings. Um, Do that. And I read through my words of affirmations that I have written on the mirror. And sometimes if I'm just not feeling it, like um, I'll do like, I'll stand there like my Superman pose and just like, just like stand there. And for, I don't know whatever reason, just that's that power pose of just standing there. It like, it powers me through sometimes. <laughs> I, so I think looking back at our interview before we had so many questions and comments about like, uh, what are resources out there? And I know part of it is to read these 10 pages of something educational or the self-improvement, but you also kind of took that and put it on yourself as like your own teacher. So share some of like how you got into that mindset, how you continued it. Like what were some of those resources? I've always actually been pretty big in like personal development, not so much as in reading. Like 75 Hard was the first time like I've physically like read a book in so long. (laughs) Uh, I like actually held one and turned through pages. But when I lived in Nashville, I had like, well, depending on traffic, it could be 45 minutes to an hour and a half commute in. I did a lot of audio books and I did miss that part of it. Um, and I would say that was the best part about 75 hard is the outdoor work- workout. Like I'd go for walks and listen to podcasts and things like that. Um, you know, so like I've, I've read some good ones and I've read some not so good ones. It's okay, <laughs> um, Tara. We know you got a puppy. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> you did that real quick. I'm doing some self-talk right now. <laughs> <laughs> some words of affirmation. Got a good body. When Lindsay, when you let listen to those audiobooks, those really those don't count, right? Because they encourage you to read ten actual pages. Yeah, the any audiobooks does not count. Any podcast doesn't count. That was just kind of like that's just an additional thing that kind of fills me up. That like, I'm like oh yeah, yeah. Um, I find like they just talk about things, and it's you know, I work from home. I work out from home. I work from home. My husband's at home half the time, so a lot of times I feel like I don't have time, like people to really around to talk to. So at least like hearing podcasts and chats and like people talking and talking about issues, I kind of like okay, like well, I'm not having that conversation. It's still kind of like okay, they talk about things that I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> so in um, reality, you're walking along the street talking to yourself, going, yeah, yeah, totally understand. That makes That's sense. <laughs> No judgment, no judgment. Oh, there's many times I walk by and I'm just like laughing at them. Like, you know, depending on what the the episode or, you know, what that podcast was about, I'll be like cracking up. People probably think I'm, well, no, I know for sure people in my neighborhood think I'm crazy because the uh, outdoor workouts my poor neighbors had to endure me dancing out in the backyard at like 11 o'clock at night just because I had to get like a 45 minute workout in, you know, or just doing laps around my backyard and they're out there like, like, I know. So I'm what did you, when you did your outdoor workout, did you pretty much concentrate on walking outside? Was that was your main choice? Yeah. So because um, I was doing such a hard weightlifting and program already. Like I, in the beginning, that, that was like a big mind shift for me. And I had like a friend, you know, my friend Heather, she's like, so your role, so you're you're gonna burn yourself because <laughs> I was like, oh no, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna like I'm gonna do this program and I'm gonna do like insanity outside. Like I was like went into it very gun ho, but quickly was like, after you go so many days of no rest day, I was like, my body was just tired. So I kind of just resorted to it was an outdoor walk primarily, um, 
if I could get it in. Weekends was harder to do, so sometimes it would just even like out in the backyard, like I said, doing yoga. Or if some days was like, I was just like, I do not want to do this. This is stupid. I don't even know why I'm doing this, but I'm going to quit at this point. Um, so I would just put on like, you know, some kind of like dance workout. Like we have a, a TV on our back patio so I could put like some kind of workout on out there and be out like in the middle of the yard like out there just Zumba in it because I was like that just seemed fun like something fun to do instead of having to worry about like a grueling workout. So Lindsay, I know I'm so I'm so stuck on the workout and making sure that we can all get because I'm like I know a lot of people like Tara when I read it to her she's like wait two 45 minute workouts I said yes too she was a little overwhelmed to buy that too so I know you traveled sometimes so and I know you posted like you're walking around your hotel but what about did you just do your on your phone you brought your workout what did you do because some people say well I worked out or I mean I was on work, I couldn't work out because that's not easy. Yeah, there's too much going on. Yeah, I will say that is like the beauty of technology. I think it comes with bad things, but it comes with good things. So Beachbody comes with an app. You can, you know, like I have no affiliation with them in any way. Um, I just, I've used their products and they work if you yeah. work. So, um, you know, I have an app. I can stream it on my tablet and I would be down in the gym, you know, most, most of the time at like four and five o'clock in the morning, there's nobody in the fitness center. So I could just stream it in there and use the equipment um, from my phone or the beauty of that is there's always a workout you can do. And this is, I get on to my husband cause he's on, you know, always in and out of hotels and he's like, Oh, I couldn't go down there. I'm like, you can, you can do things in your hotel room. You know, you can, you can do push-ups. You can, you know, if you got to push up on the wall, push up on the wall. If you, if you got to do tricep dips off of a chair or a couch, there's things you can always do. Just, you have to want to do them, you know. But that's true. My sister, when I saw my sister this, and just a couple of weeks ago, we were in the um, hotel and she found a whole, like a body weight cardio um, workout on YouTube for free and she did it. It was exhausting watching her because, you know, I was injured. So. <laughs> <You're doing so good. laughs> she pulled it up and it was all body weight and she was, you know, working hard. So you can, I mean, she did it right in the room with us. So, I mean, I don't ever find that. I know it's hard when you're working. Don't you think, Lindsay, when you're on the road, though, to get that get momentum? That. Oh, it definitely is. Like, it required me to get up, like, extra extra early to go do it but at the same time like i'm kind of a nerd in that like i love to see different hotel fitness centers and like what they have to offer and i kind of geek out that, on that so i'm like if the hotel has a fitness i'm like oh i gotta go down there i gotta see what they got um but <laughs> i love that there's <laughs> always I'm something to do. I'm <laughs> people are like where's the mint on the pillow and then he's like no where's the fitness center? <laughs> Uh, but I mean, they even like they most of them, you know, depending on where you are, you know, indoor outdoor pool, go for a swim. That's a workout, you know, walk, take the steps up and down like you can go in the stairwells and just go up and down the stairwells. And, you know, that that can get you what you need, you know, like it may not be as an intensive a workout that you may be used to, but it's it's movement in the inner. I mean, I was traveling a few weeks ago, and I like to explore the city that I'm in, and I had just been walking around so much that my watch was like, do you want to make this a workout? And I was like, well, yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> I need to I did have to go to Denver, and it was my first time in Denver, so I was like, oh, like, I'm going to get out and walk outside and explore, and want well, well, our hotel is like next to a homeless camp, and I'm like... I have to do an outdoor workout and there's, you know, there's a homeless camp, right? Like how, you know, at that point, when I first pulled in, I was like, I'm going to fail out of something so outside of my control. Like, you know, and so I was so incredibly thankful. Like once I got checked in, I was like, okay, what can I do? What can I do? You know, so luckily they had a courtyard that had a pool and I felt like a complete hamster walking around this pool over and over, but I was like, I will not fail. Because by this point, I'm like 40, 50 something days in, and I'm like, I don't want to fail over this. So, um, and I know, Lindsay, a lot of your workouts or like when you finish them, you would post it on your social media. Like you post your workout or you post that. Do you feel like that was your accountability to yourself? Like you knew people were watching? 
Um, for sure. Like I had so many like friends, like they, they were like just cheerleaders and like, they, you know, like in the beginning, like, you know, like, especially on struggle days, if I, you know, I'm not one that likes to show vulnerability, but I felt like with this, like it was kind of like, I didn't want it to look all good and all easy. So like the days, where the good, bad, and the ugly. you know, like that, uh, you know, I had so many people that would constantly message me and they'd be like, you got that. Like, don't give up, you know, like you're inspiring. And like, that really helped push me um, along. And I just, I wanted to like show like from the beginning to end that I didn't do this any crazy way. Like I just did it with nutrition and exercise. There was no pills, no surgery, you know, like I think people can like easily look at some and be like, oh yeah, like I feel bad for celebrities in some sense. I, I do and I don't like, you know, like when they snap back quickly from a baby, some of them legitimately do the work and I feel like they don't get that appreciation for that, that they did. Granted, they have all the resources at their fingertips to hire that chef and to help them get there. But no one can, you know, unless you do surgery or like, things like that like it can't be done for you so i i wanted to show it was done the right way in the natural yeah. way and so now is the kind of time where you know again on instagram i, I don't know how to share it to you all but i'd love to share that before and after photo for everybody i mean check it out we've got day one and then seven and five years later i just i love this photo that you have shared with us and allowed for us to share with our audience. So just really well, I regret I like I should not have worn high waisted pants that day because I felt like that kind of hit it. Um, but yeah, I did lose it. I think uh, I'm down 19 pounds now, but I, I think between 75 hard, it was like 16 pounds total. I came down. Yeah. So you mentioned you're also the mom of a beautiful daughter. I'm the, the mom of a beautiful daughter and the always asking, I'm sure, about just like your workouts and why you're doing this and why are you going to the gym and, and all the stuff I joke with my daughter that I go so early in the morning so I never miss out on time with her. Um, but how how was that to so talk a little bit more about the impact perhaps that it had with you and your daughter? Um, I've always tried to I mean, ever since I've had her, fitness has kind of been just an aspect of my life. Um, I, I try so hard not to like criticize or critique my body in front of her. Like even when I do feel fluffy, I don't want her to see that I eat the things that I eat or do the things I do because I don't like the way I look. Uh, it's always if you ask her, why do we, why do we work out? Her response will be to be strong and to be affairs, which I'm like, when has this ever been a problem in our life? She's, She's ready for it. She's prepared. We're ready to meet up bears. <laughs> um, and we are strong. And, you know, like I also was, you know, teaching kickboxing. So she was very uh, every Tuesday night at the gym with me. And she's over there. Good job, guys. Good job. You know, one more. We, you know, she, she was my little mini coach as well. So um I, I do like that in the sense of working out from home because I think it does give her the opportunity to see the things that I do. Um, and hopefully I set, tell like people, I go, I grew up with a single mom. She did not have the income and the resource to provide a balanced, nutritious diet. We grew up on hamburger helper and hot dogs and, and all of that. When I hit my mid to late 20s, my, you know, by then my metabolism was down and I just started putting on so much weight. And at that point, like I was able to eat all of those things instead. Like I've always been thin, thankfully, but at that point though, I wasn't, and I had no clue how to correct it. Um, so I've had to learn, you know, what is a carb? What is a protein? How do those, how, what is a balanced diet and all of those things? So I want her to have that foundation growing up that she doesn't have to figure that out. It's actually a struggle right now because, like I said, all she will eat is chicken nuggets and peanut butter and jelly. And we've actually, the last couple of weeks, have just, like, started laying down the wall of, no, you're going to eat what we eat. And if not, you have to go to bed. So most nights she just looks at it and, like, all right, I'm tired. I'm going to bed. So it's not really working yet. I thought by now she would be open to trying things, but not so much. But hopefully one day she will learn. <laughs> So I remember that brings up with the kids when we had the biggest loser program, 
I used to always have people say, well, my husband's not going to eat that healthy food. My kids only like cereal and cookies and unhealthy stuff. I said, I used to always say, so you're providing an unhealthy lifestyle. If it's there, you're going to continue to eat it. If they don't have a choice, it just make it in a fun way, you know, buy and try different things. But if you keep filling it up with all like the, the sugar cereals and the cookies and, you know, the ice cream, they're going to eat it. But if you never show them to eat a healthy way, they're never going to learn to eat a healthy way. And um, once you get like, I remember one lady said, you know, my husband's on board and he said he actually feels better. And now I'm having to be like creative and fun serving things to my daughter, like, you know, making shapes out of stuff, but he's actually eating them now. And with it out there, in the, with, if something's not there in the pantry, but like the carrots and ranch are or whatever, that's what she has to eat. So, or, you know, their daughters or sons. So I always think that, you know, they don't have to eat anyway. We all, you know, no five-year-old can go grocery shopping yet. <laughs> so yeah, they can eat good stuff. No, and I think we'll get there with her right now. It is just a culture shock. Like, it is a shock she's never been forced to. So, right now, it's just kind of testing those boundaries. Um, so, I yes. hope after enough tantrums, she gets there. We'll but, no, you are, like, literally every parent would say that. And I'm like, but you know what? They'll, they'll come through. They won't starve. I mean, they'll eventually, you know, eat and stuff. So, one of the things and, that I read about the 75 day was it's not all about the physical part of it. Um, it's more mental. And I feel like after I read like your little, you know, dissertation afterwards about how you felt, um, what do you think you got more out of it? Physical or mental? Physical or mental. And you kind of physical was big. The physical was big. And that's what I was like hoping for and prepared for. Um, I was not in any way prepared for the mental toughness of it, um, you know, because I did already work out before. So going to the two workouts a day, I was like, eh, workouts, two workouts, easy. Um, but the, the mental part of it came as a, a biggest surprise and the biggest growth, honestly, out of it. Um, one was because it does take so much dang time to complete all those tasks. Um, you really are pouring into yourself and you learn so much about yourself along the way of like, you know, there's a lot of selection points of like, okay, well, today was hard. What was hard about today? Um, I learned, you know, not really surprise, but time management's not the best for me. So, uh, you know, knowing that I was struggling to get everything in, in the beginning, I'm like, you know, how can, how can I help this, uh, you know? So it came down to like scheduling parts of the day to make sure it was hitting those things. Um, it also like by listening to pod, like forcing myself to give myself time to go on those walks and listen to podcasts, gave me growth and things about myself that like I would listen to like th these podcasts, you know, um, you know, Mel Robbins um, with the five second rule. She's one that I really, really love. Um, there's another lady, Shaleen Johnson. She used to be a beach body coach, but does like whole social media thing. Um, and they would start to talk about their ADHD. And I was like, hmm, a lot of these things they're saying really resonate with me. Um, so then I like started actually doing counseling to see like, do I have ADHD? Because so much of this rings true to me. Um, and, and it forced me to do the work and to like, and all of that's still very new, but like to do the counseling of, do I have high functioning anxiety or ADHD? But these things that I probably wouldn't pick up that like, I just thought they were kind of quirks of myself along the way to be like, okay, these are problems and this is where it bleeds in. Um, so that part of those, those outcomes were kind of the biggest surprise that came out of it and that I'm thankful for um, as I start to work through those things. Um, and just like the pride in the end of like, you know, this was so hard to do. So many people fa fail doing it. Um, I, I've, it's a pride, like, will I probably never do it again? I might, it just will be a very long time before I do. <laughs> um, but I'm proud that I did it. Um, and it's surprisingly, I don't want to say cult like, but there's a huge like following of it of like people you don't even know, but if they've gone through it, they're like right there with you, pushing you through of like, oh, trust me, I've been there. Like once you get past this, you're good. You know, 
when she got past day like 50, it was kind of like, this is just your life now. And it easily became, this is just what it's you like do. It's like a sentence. <laughs> it's like a life. This is your life sentence. But now I know you're not going to do 75 days again, but like, Lindsay, I know you're keeping up with your workouts. You're kind of going into the macros things now. Are you keeping up with the reading part of it? I've, I, I've slacked off on the reading part. I have done more. I have, I still do it. It's just not a daily thing. Um, I think because like I said, like one of the things that I'm working through is my high functioning anxiety. So, um, the biggest burden of 75 hard was I have to do this. And if I don't do it every day perfectly, just the weight of all of that was so much. And I would say that was the biggest mental toughness for me. I was like, I have to do this. I have to do this perfectly. And if I don't do that, you know, so if, I've tried some things that I felt like were extremely burdensome on me. I've like released a little bit. I'm still reading um, and I'm reading a book. Uh, I forget what it's called. I bought it in the airport, uh, but it is a not, or it is a fictional book, which is like probably the first time I really read a fictional book. Cause I was like, I want to read something different to see if like that's something that I enjoy. So it's, it's, giving me a little bit of freedom to like branch out to try a few different things, you know, that's not so, you know, strict with the guidelines of the program. What were the, you didn't tell, you read three books during the 75 day, right? I did. Uh, so I can't remember all of, all of the names of them. So the first one was like on the, Oh, I'd have to go downstairs and grab the books, but it's okay. it was on like Reese Witherspoon's bestseller book. And it's like something about shameless or tameless oh, okay. or something like that. Um, it was horrible. I was like, my husband <laughs> every night was like, what, what is your book about? I'm like, honestly, I don't know. I'm trying to figure like, I'm hoping like I'm on like the last chapter and I still have no clue what I've even read about. Um, I didn't like it. Um, I read the uh, five the five love languages. Mm -hmm. um, I read that one, and then what was the other one? The other one was more just kind of like a um, miss, like um, women women miss, like um, yeah. things that like women don't necessarily just come out and talk about. But it um, provides like a, it provided a lot of validation of like you know things you think, but you're like, I wonder if this is true or not. Probably like the random things you'd find if you search somebody's like Google search history, like a woman's Google search history. Um, so it was really uh, validating in the sense of reading that, that I'm like, oh, other women feel this. Okay. <laughs> so hearing all of this, and thank you so much for sharing some of those like vulnerable points and some of the the tough point, if you had to sum everything up and like one thing to share to our viewers or, you know, to any female out there, what do you think you would share? That you don't, it doesn't have to be perfect. You just have to be consistent. So if you say you're going to show up for yourself every day, show up for yourself every day. If you have like, a, you and you have to be flexible in that because some I say that in like the sense of your workouts, like if you go into it headstrong or with a plan, there's life things that are going to throw you curveballs and you have to be able to be flexible with those to remain consistent in that. Um, so it's not always going to go according to plan, but do your best to make sure that you adapt quickly so you can stay true to yourself, I think is is the thing, the biggest thing. Cause like I said, I started 75 hard with such like a plan of how it was going to go and it did not go in any of that direction. Oh, <laughs> well, you got a good strong viewer out of that. Somebody else loved it. <laughs> Amanda loves it. But Lindsay, you did complete it. And what you got out of it, I really felt like we needed to share with other females that might be considering it because I hear people talking about it all the time. And it is important, Tara and I always are trying to remind people, even just for this thriving females to take, you know, 30 minutes, an hour and hang out with us when we do an interview, just to learn something from another female, because we don't do that for each other very much or um, take the time for ourselves. Even, I mean, I don't even have kids at home sometimes and I don't take the time, you know, for myself. And that's what's hard for everybody. But I know a lot of people had interest in this. And so um, we will be adding like all this stuff on there, but. 
we thought it would be fun. Um, I got this crazy idea on May 1st. Uh, we will, um, well, uh, Tara thinks I'm a genius because today is the 21st. <laughs> it just happens to be this way. But on May 1st uh, through the 22nd, I mean, May 1 through May 21st, we're going to do a 21 day mini hard challenge. And we're going to take everything that Lindsay um, has told us to do, you know, the 245 minutes, drink a gallon. So I think if the 75 hard is just overwhelming at first, I think this will be a really great um, mini project to do. We can try to take this and it's just that something, a great alternative instead of jumping right in. And um, Lindsay, I'll probably, I didn't ask you this, but I'll probably get you back on. You can add a few little tidbits to everybody. Um, we'll have some, we're going to be announcing more until May 21st, but it'll be good accountability. I think it's a good little program challenge to handle it. Tara still doesn't like, she doesn't like the two 45 minute workouts and I don't like the 10 pages of reading. That's what I'm not like. I take the 90 pages of reading. It's a sacrifice I will make. <laughs> and your 10 minute workout too. I mean, I love walking. Don't get me wrong. I love to work out in the morning. And then it's I think that would be, that would be a tough change for me. Yeah. And I want to apologize to the viewers. I am completely centered for Instagram and I have been like this holding my arm up the whole time. So I'm I, I'm like, I don't know what to do. Look. No, so. <laughs> right, right. Well, I'm like, well, no. and Sarah, you got a fantastic comment that you are such a trooper getting surgery this morning and kicking ass tonight. You've got some amazing followers are here so thank you for showing us how to be strong in different ways i'm not gonna lie ladies i am starting to hurt a little bit <laughs> like a lot so yes i am hurting but i did this is i wanted to say this because like like my sister's like why are you gonna do this but in my own voice we're like why are you gonna do it but um it's important like Kara has a job i have a job Lindsay has a job but um the thriving females is something that i think is good and if we have time to do it like I want to squeeze like time in to, you know, be able to talk to women. And if this was the only time that worked for all three of us, you know, I'm biting the bullet, being answered in my chair at the moment with the pain, but it's okay because we have other people coming up and it's, and I appreciate Tara all the time. We shuffle our schedule. Lindsay, thank you for, I know your daughter was gone tonight. This was like a perfect opportunity. She was at grandma's, right? Yes. So, <laughs> she would be right up in here telling oh, y'all yeah. about everything. Yeah, I have the door open myself. So. <laughs> hey, well, you got to hear Tara's, you got to hear Tara's dog, my dog. So yes, we do have dogs and this is real. Reality sometimes. sometimes. And I'm a little bit in pain. And so I think I'm ready to sign off. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you again so much. Please keep an eye out for our next interviews. We are trying so hard to get them out to you all to let you know when they are coming so it can be a part of your own schedule at home. Hey, Lindsay, oh. thank you so much for being our second interview. Um, I'm excited, you guys. Stay tuned for more information about the 21 day mini hard. And congratulations on all your progress, Lindsay. You're awesome. Thank you. And thank you guys for having me. I know when you, when you guys reached out, I'm like, thriving female. Like most days, I just feel like I'm surviving. So I'm very honored <laughs> <laughs> to be here and, you know, love, love what you guys are doing. And it's, it is just, it's so important for females to lift up females instead of tear each other down. So yeah, no, know. I love it. Yeah. I love everything you have to say. Thank you, Lindsay. All right. Thank all right. You all. <laughs> I go get some pain meds. <laughs> well, I have them and they're not working, so I'm wondering. Oh, no. <laughs> Bye. Have a good night.